All right, we're back. We're on page 187, and we're going to try to finish this up. Uh, so let's see. We're talking about distance formula and also just like, you know, how close things get to each other, right? So in this case, we have a particle A, which moves from 2, 6 to 12, negative 5 in 14 minutes. Let's write an equation for that. So uh, I'm going to say that that's, I'm going to use subscripts for that, and I'm going to keep, ooh, blue. Nothing wrong with blue, but, you know, I'm pretty much a, a, a black ink type of person. So I'm going to use subscript 1. I should probably use A, but you know what I'll do? I'm going to put uh, article A equals. Okay, and then we're using one. First letter of the alphabet. It's fine. Two, six. All right, so you're going to pick up 10 in 14 minutes, and you're going to lose 11 in 14 minutes. Zero to 14. So far, I think that's okay. Um, and then, well, maybe I should have drawn that smaller. Particle B, because that's a thing. X2, Y2. So where do you start? You start at 5, 1, and then it takes you 20 minutes. So you need to pick up 6 in 20, and then you need to pick up 9 in 20. And then 0, to 20. Okay, good to go so far. So now what we need is the distance. So I usually just write it out in kind of like in general, right? I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna plug those in. That's insanity because this is definitely gonna be a calculator thing. So x2 of t minus x1 of t squared y2 of t. You get like a weird error on your calculator if you forget to do of t on each of the individual functions. I don't offhand remember what the error is, uh, but it just like isn't gonna work. So I'm writing this on paper, but I'm definitely going to be using the norm of a vector on the calculator. So this is gonna be our distance. Let's go to the calculator and see what we can learn. So um, go over here. We're gonna do like most of the same things. I'm just gonna start a new problem here. Go to the graph page, because I think that's the easiest place to enter these. Um, so 2 plus 10 over ah, over 14t, 6 minus 11 over 14t. It should take 14, so I'm just going to change it. OK, and then uh, 5 plus 6 over 20t, 1 plus 9 over 20t, and to 20. Okay, so can't really tell how close they get, but like they do intersect, which is good, depending on, well, I don't know, it depends. The question is not when and where do they intersect, so maybe that doesn't even matter. Uh, let's insert calculator page, and let's create a distance formula. So distance as a function of t. I'm going to do the norm, menu 7, 7 of the vector, so vector x2 of t, comma, y2 of t, and then minus x1 of t, comma, y1 of t. Okay, and if you want to see it, it looks like uh, like a, so it's a square root of a, of a, it's a square root of a quadrant. It's going to look like an, if we graph this, this will look like an absolute value because the square root of t squared is the absolute value of t, and then there's like all this other stuff, but like, it's gonna look like an absolute value. And that's basically what I'm gonna do, right? So I could say like, when they start, this is how far apart they are. Uh, when t is one, they're closer. When t is two, they're still closer. t is three, closer. t is four, closer. Five, farther. So somewhere, somewhere in there is the minimum, somewhere between three and five. Um, and, you know, we could keep playing around with that, actually. And we could kind of, like, work it out using the intermediate value theorem, sort of. But we just don't want to do that. Um, so what I'm going to do instead is go to a graph. And this is going to be a weird graph. So normal graph page, normal function. I'm going to graph the distance. But when you're graphing here, you need to use x as your variable. If I try to use t, watch what happens. It's going to be like, do you want to make a slider? I don't want to make a slider. That usually means you're just using the wrong variable. So I didn't want that. So let me press tab and change this to an x. And here, it sort of looks like an absolute value, but it's smoother. 
So what is this a graph of? This is a graph of distance over time, the distance between the two particles over time. So the horizontal axis here is time. The vertical axis is distance between the two objects at that time. So if I find the minimum of this, menu six, option two, if I find the minimum of this, this is the time. So the time is 4.369. The distance is 1.255. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to copy this graph um, into the notes so that you can like see it. And then I'm gonna offer up a way that you could potentially do this by hand. Actually, like I was always, I always in my mind was like, you can't do this by hand. You might be, well, you might almost be able to. Um, so first let's, let's create a graph. Doesn't need to be perfect, but it should be good. So this is time and this is distance. And it looked sort of like this, kind of. I mean, it doesn't really look like that, um, but it kind of looks like that. So like copy it off your calculator screen, right? And so this point, the minimum here, is at 4.369 comma 1.255. <coughs> oh, man. I'm gonna lose my voice. This is the last video for the day, so it's okay. Um, so this is this is the time, and this is the distance. So the minimum distance is 1.255 at t equals 4.3. Three, six, nine, what are you moving? Minutes. So that's the closest they ever get. I'm gonna go back to the calculator for a second for like two things, right? So one thing is when we were just like messing around, uh, we got a distance of 1.344. So like we could have kept going, like I could have done D of 4.5 and been like, oh, that's a little smaller, uh, D of 4.25, uh, it's like, ever so slightly small and like kept going, right? So now I know it's somewhere probably between 4.25 and 4.5, keep going. My next one would have been 4.375, which is like really close. So that's one thing. The other thing is uh, it was pointed out to me at some point that like if I can minimize the thing in here, it will minimize this overall thing. And the thing in here is a quadratic. So let me do something here. I don't expect you to really do this. If I get the numerator of this, like get num, G-E-T-N-U-M, get numerator of the answer, and then square it, uh, square it, so just square it. Okay, if I complete the square on this, uh, the answer, comma, T. Okay, so the vertex of this is, so this is a quadratic that opens up. The vertex is at this thing, comma, that, other hideous thing, but like the key thing is here, right? This is um, this is the 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 x coordinate of the vertex. So what is this? I think it's going to be four point three six nine. It is. You can actually do this sort of by hand. Like I don't think you'd be able to do this by hand. But if after you get the distance, if you work this out, which like good luck. If you work this out, if you can find the minimum of the quadratic that's inside there, assuming it's quadratic, which it will be if they're both linear, assuming you can find the vertex of that quadratic, so the thing that's inside the radical, the x-coordinate of that is the time at which the minimum occurs. You can solve these by hand. I don't expect anyone to do that. I don't think anybody would. I had never really even thought of it, and then one of my students last year like pointed out to me that you could do it, and I was like, whoa. Um, so you can, uh, and that's like pretty neat, pretty weird. Uh, so I think that's, those are the two things that I wanted to point out. I don't really expect you to do either of them, but you could potentially use the intermediate value theorem to like at least work your way toward the minimum, which seems just horrible. Um, and you can kind of do them by hand, which is insane and will pretty much only work if they're linear, moving like in a linear fashion. Like on the previous one, I don't think it would have worked, but I could also be wrong about that. Anyway, I'm going to stop this video here, come back in the next video, and keep going. So I will see you there.